I'm going to teach you how to play the finest fish. I've set up a three player game here with a fish board for each player. Uh, normally when you set up the game each fish board is empty, has no scales on it. But I've placed some scales on this fish just to demonstrate uh, how the game works and how you'll take your turns. So the game is played in rounds and a round consists of each player choosing from these sets of scales in the center, choosing one of the sets and placing those scales on their fish. Uh, as soon as one player finishes filling in their fish board all the way, that triggers the end of the game phase. We finish out that round and then you'll tally up your scores. There are three ways to score in the game, so keep all three of those methods in mind as you choose your scales and place them on your fish to maximize your score. The first way is by completing patterns. You can see these different pattern cards up here. Uh, if you arrange your scales on your fish so that they complete a pattern or match a pattern card, and if you have that card in your hand, you'll score three points at the end of the game. As an example here, you can see that I have this card in my hand already and I've already completed that pattern somewhere on my fish. That'll be worth three points at the end of the game. Incomplete patterns aren't gonna count against you, so if you don't complete one, um, that's totally fine. Each player does start with one pattern card in your hand. Again, you don't have to complete that one. If you don't want to, it won't count against you. Throughout the game, you can purchase more pattern cards up here by spending scales, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the one thing that's important is probably keeping your hand private so that the other players really don't know how well you're doing. If you've completed those pattern cards or not, you can have plenty of pattern cards in your hand that you don't have completed yet. Maybe you do have them all completed. That lack of information is really good uh, to keep your opponents guessing. So completing pattern cards is the first method of scoring. The second way is to create clusters of same colored scales. A cluster is a group of at least three scales, three or more, that are all uh, touching adjacent on one whole side. So this is a cluster of three scales. This right here is a cluster of five white scales. Now it's important to note, diagonal or kitty corner, like this doesn't count. Those two white ones are not adjacent. They're not part of the same cluster. So they have to be sharing a whole side to be a cluster. That's the second method of scoring. The third and final way to score is with black scales. They're special. You won't find them on any pattern cards, but they are worth an extra point each. Every single one that's on your fish is an extra point. Black scales can also be formed into clusters, so you can score black scales both ways as the extra bonus point and being part of a cluster if you are smart about the way that you arrange your fish. So pay attention to that too. And most important of all, of all three of these ways of scoring, the scoring is counted at the very end of the game. So if you've completed patterns or clusters, you need to keep them intact until the end of the game if you want to score the points. Now on your turn, you'll choose one of the sets of scales from the center of the table to place on your fish. Now ultimately, all of these scales that you draw on your turn are going to get placed on your fish, but before you do that, you can take an opportunity to trade with whatever's in the fish bowl, or even spend scales to buy new pattern cards. And we'll go over that. <clears throat> First, let's talk about placing your scales. To place a scale on your fish, let's say I want to place this one, you need to place it in such a way that it is either in one of these three leftmost starting positions or so that one of its inner edges is fully adjacent to another scale. So this is okay, this is okay, this is not okay, it's not fully adjacent. Over here is not okay, that's not one of the start positions, neither is this, right? That would be okay. So I'm going to place it right here because that completes pattern card here. Now I don't have that pattern card yet in my hand. I'm going to need to buy that for those points to score, but let's place it right there. Now let's talk about trading. Uh, any of the newly acquired scales that you just got can be traded with whatever's in the fishbowl. So I just might want to do that because I happen to have a card that needs this scale. Let's take a look. I have this objective card. Now that I've traded for this one, I can place this scale right here and complete this pattern as well. So my original pattern that I drew at the very beginning of the game that I was dealt is complete. This next one is complete right here, and I've got a pattern that's completed that's still up there. Which brings me to the last thing <clears throat> that you can do on your turn. You can spend scales to buy new pattern cards. I just drop it in the fishbowl and take the card that I want. And I happen to already have that completed. You don't have to have the pattern completed to buy it. You can buy it knowing that you're going to get there. 
totally fine, but in this case I already had it. So I'm well on my way to scoring <clears throat> a lot of points with three patterns completed. Now, when it comes to spending scales, you can actually also spend scales from your fish that have already been placed. You can't trade that way and you can't move things around on your fish, but you can spend them. So, I'm not in a position where I would want to spend these because all of these scales are kind of involved already in an objective card. But if I wanted to buy another uh, pattern card from up here, I could peel a scale back off my fish, put it in the fishbowl, and buy it. The rules for which scales can be taken back off of your fish are the opposite of the rules for placement. So if I take a scale off, basically I just can't leave anything orphaned or floating around that doesn't follow the normal placement rules. So basically you have to place scales starting on the left and you remove them kind of starting from the right, if that makes sense. So any of these scales here are eligible to be taken. Um, most of the time it's pretty easy to do. Uh, depending on how you've got your things laid out, you can even peel this one off. It doesn't leave anything kind of floating, right? Everything's still connected edge to edge. So that's how you can peel scales back off. Again, you can't peel them off to trade them, you can't peel them off to move them around, you can peel them off to spend them. So, if you do things in the right order, you could peel something off, spend it, then use one of your new scales to trade to get that same scale back. You can do some very complicated compounding moves if you want to. Just remember that any scales you put in the fishbowl are going to be available for your opponents to use on their turns. So be careful what you put in there. Uh, usually you're not going to want to put a black scale in there. Those are valuable, for instance. Now your turn isn't over until all the scales that you've taken are placed. Once you've done that, your turn ends. If you've purchased any pattern cards, slide the remainder to the right and place a new one or new ones on the left. That's very important. After your turn, the next player will go and they'll choose from the remaining sets, play the same kind of a turn, spending, scaling, placing. After all the players have taken their turn, the round ends and we will move on to the next one. Now, after each player has chosen their scales, taken their turns, and the round is over, then all we're going to do is we're going to move the fish along the progress track here on the ring that we're, we're using and move the first player token to the next player. Then we'll draw new sets of scales. Again, we'll choose one set. We'll draw one set per player. So in this three player game, we're gonna have three sets. And now we're all set for the next round. Now, once we've finished enough rounds that this little fish token makes its way all the way back around to the orange space with the little refresh icon, that means it's time to clean the fishbowl. This fishbowl will have accumulated a lot of little scales as people have been buying cards and spending their scales in there. So to do this step, we're going to dump all those back in the bag and just draw one new one at random. That's pretty lucky for whoever gets to go next. Uh, the other thing that we will do at the end when we hit this refresh uh, space is that whichever card is in the rightmost position is going to get discarded. There's a chance that it becomes stale. If it's a card that nobody wants, it's colors that haven't come up a lot, we don't want this to get stale, we want people to have options. So you'll always discard that rightmost card when we hit this refresh space. So again, cleaning the fishbowl and cycling out that last card are only done at the end of the round when we happen to land on one of those orange spaces. This is why it's important to follow the correct ring based on the number of players. Now, in a four player game, it is possible if everyone's playing with a certain strategy for you to run out of scales and before someone finishes filling up their fish. It's rare, but if that happens, the game is immediately over. If you're not able to create new piles, enough new piles for everyone at a round, then the game immediately ends. Again, there's no penalty for finishing or not finishing your fish. We just play until someone's is full and that's the end of the game. But once someone does fill out their fish, we finish that round so that everyone you know, gets their turn and then we're going to tally up the scores. Remember that you will want to keep your clusters and your patterns intact throughout the whole game because they only count if they're still intact at the end. So at this point, to tally up the scoring, you can use these little scorecards. They're very simple. It just has three spots to put in the three ways of scoring. You'll get three points for every pattern card that you've completed. Make sure to reveal them and prove to your opponents that you actually have them completed at the end of the game because you may have broken those patterns by peeling scales off your fish. Same with clusters. Tally up one point per scale that's in a cluster. In this case, I've got three points here 
and another five here, and then tally a point for every black scale that you have on your fish. And don't forget that black scales also can be in clusters, so they can be counted both ways. Then you'll just sum up your total score. Whoever has the highest score has clearly bred the finest fish.